In the last section of this chapter, 7th graders, we are going to learn about piecewise functions. And we're going to look at these four things. Evaluating them, graphing and writing them, and writing step functions, and also taking absolute value functions and writing them as piecewise functions. So what is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is a function that's basically two or more equations. So when you have two or more equations, you have a piecewise function. Now, piecewise, it's because we're talking about each piece. Each piece of the function applies to different parts of the domain. So basically, if you're just looking at this, uh, this function right here, if we look at this one, this is only part of this line. We're only using a domain that's in this part of this graph. Same thing down here. So the domain is different for each one of these lines. So if you notice, f of x equals and then we have two functions, x minus 2 and 2x plus 1. Now, any time that the domain is less than or equal to 0, we're going to use the first function. Any time x is greater than 0, we're going to use the second function. The expression x minus 2 represents the value of f when x is less than or equal to 0, and 2x plus 1 represents the value of f when we use x is greater than 0. So in example 1, we're going to take this function, which was from the previous core concept, and we're going to evaluate it when a, x is equal to 0, and b, x is equal to 4. So we look at our function, and we look at a, and we want to know when x equals 0. Well, if x is 0, that means we're going to use the top function, f of x, equals x minus 2. And all we do is plug in 0. So f of 0 gives us 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. So f of 0 is negative 2. Now we want x equals 4. Well, we are going to use the second one since x is greater than 0 and x is 4. So we're going to plug in f of 4 into 2 multiplied by 4 plus 1. And that's going to give us 9. So f of 4 is going to equal 9. All right, now in example 2. Example 2, we're going to graph and write piecewise functions. So in this example, we're just going to graph it. So here's our piecewise function. y equals, and then our two functions, as you can see here, describe the domain and range. Well, you can start this by making two t-tables if you'd like. Or what you can do is graph by slope and y-intercept. So you could start at negative 4 and then go down 1 over 1. But if we look, x is less than 0. So we're only plugging in values that are less than 0. But you have to start at 0. Because 0, if we plug it in, is going to give us negative 4. But since it's not a solution, you're going to do an open circle. So let me slide this up. Here we go. If you notice right here, I have to plug in 0 because that's my starting point. But 0 is not a solution since it has to be less than 0. So we put an open circle right there. Now, you are all capable enough to do a lot of this in your head. The next number, negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. So we could go negative 1, negative 3. If you plug in negative 4, negative, negative 4 is positive 4, minus 4 is 0. Here's my line right here. But we do not go to the right. Because once we get at 0 and to the right, we use this function. So if you plug in 0, the first point, solid dot, 0, 0, since 0 is a solution. Plug in 1, we get 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on. Since our slope is 1, our y-intercept is 0, we start here, and we go to the right. So these are two functions in 1. Example number 3. Now we're going to be given the graph, and we need to write the piecewise function. So let's start with f of x. 
f of x equals, and we have two functions. So looking at this, what do we know? Well, I'm going to use the one on the left first, this one. Since the y-intercept is 3, I know it's going to be plus 3, and I know the slope looks like negative 1, so it's going to be negative x plus 3. Now, the second one looks like my y-intercept is negative 1, and my slope is 2. So, that part's pretty easy. X, negative x, wait a minute. Is this correct? I'm hoping you caught something. Not a negative. Since this is going uphill, it's a positive x. So we know that f of x equals x plus 3, and f of x equals 2x minus 1. But the domain, it's the open dot right here on this uh, x plus 3. So that means 0 is not a solution. But the domain, we need a comma, the domain would be if when? If x is less than 0. Now this one is going to be, it can be 0 since it's a solid dot. So it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. And that's my answer. Now the next thing we're going to look at is graphing and writing step functions. Now there's a really easy way to think about step functions. What does this look like to you? It looks like stairs. So, study tip, step functions look like stairs. A step function is a piecewise function defined by a constant value. It's constant. That means there. it's just like y equals 2, y equals 3, y equals 4. It's just pieces of horizontal lines. The graph of each function consists of a series of line segments. Looking at this. When x is 0 to 2, and then we go 2 to 4 interval, 4 to 6 interval, 6 to 8 interval. However, you'll notice that the first dot is always closed. Therefore, it is a solution. That's why these are all less than or equal to's. But then, for example, 2 here is not a solution. Therefore, it just says less than 2. There are no equal to's here. So now we look at example 4. You rent a karaoke machine for five days. The rental company charges $50 for the first day and $25 for each additional day. Write and graph a step function that represents the relationship between x, which is the number of days, and the total cost y in dollars. So, I'm just going to make a t-table. x is the number of days. Y is the total cost. Well, we know if we go in and rent it right away, that's zero days. It's automatically going to cost 50 bucks. But it's also going to cost 50 bucks at one day. One day or less is going to be 50 bucks. Now, from one day to two days, it's going to be an increase of a 25 bucks, so it's going to be $75. But if you rent it for exactly one day, it's not $75. So x has to be greater than 1, but less than or equal to 2. And then 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. That means after day 2, as soon as you get 2 days in like a minute, then it goes to the next increment. And that would be 100, and we want 5 days. So then day 3 to day 4... Day 4 to day 5. And now we're going to graph this. Labels, titles, we have all of it. And here we go. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From 0, day 0, we pay 50 bucks. But if, if you're not running it at all, it's not going to be 50. So open dot to close dot. Open dot to close dot. Open dot to close dot. And there's our step function. Total cost in dollars versus number of days of the karaoke machine rental.